he stifled our ability to elevate him by. So a very, very common problem we see when we look to elevate people is uh, what I call this, the sit back problem, which is simply just that, in this case, Mark is sitting back, right? I'm pulling and he's sitting back, sitting back. Yeah, and he's creating problems for me there, all right? Now, we're gonna look at an entry into the legs from an elevation which would encourage him to begin doing this, okay? This is gonna be a big part of the seminar today, that um, this dichotomy between looking to elevate a guy and him sitting back and us shifting into attacks on the arms and then that giving us an opportunity to go after the legs, okay? So anyway, so let's, let, let's look at this attack. All right, so whenever we wanna elevate somebody, we wanna make sure that his, uh, his arm is over our shoulder like so. If it's underneath, Okay, this is very, very bad because now as I look to elevate him, he's gonna get a body lock on me. Okay, that's terrible. Okay, so we, what we want are what we call up grips. So grips that are going up, all right? There's a lot of different variations of up grips, but the ones which we'll look at right now are just going to be double wrist. We come forward, we pass to uh, over our shoulders, and we get double tricep grip, okay? This is like a really basic but really effective version of up grips. So I go here, I pass over my shoulders, and I grab his triceps. From here, the elevation is like so. My heels are together, my toes are apart. And what I wanna do is I don't wanna flat back. If my back is flat, when I look to elevate, what happens is it's sort of stiff and I just like land like that. What you want is you wanna round your shoulders out so you create like a rocking chair effect. If you've ever looked at a rocking chair, right? It's just because of the, the, the way that it's shaped, it's capable of just rocking with very little force, okay? That's what we wanna do with our elevation, okay? So I go here, grasp his wrists, put them over my shoulder. I come here, I round my shoulders out, okay? My heels are together, my toes are apart, and now I rock like a rocking chair, all right? Now from here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a Akani Basami into the legs, okay? Uh, come back one step. So um, with the Akani Basami, what we wanna do is you want some kind of grip on the secondary leg, and we want to frame with our arm and our, uh, uh, the leg that stays on the inside, right? So we'll start off with a scoop grip, like so my left hand makes a scoop grip. My right arm and my right leg is framing, and now I bump him up a little bit. See how his foot comes off the mat when I do that? Now my left leg passes underneath, and I lock up a triangle. I'm holding his secondary leg tight. If Mark were able to bring his secondary leg far away from me, this isn't the end of the world, there are other things we can switch into, but it's gonna create some problems for me. If I can hold this like tight here, okay? Like, there's no way he can sprawl on me now, right? If his legs are tight together, that is not an option for him, right? If he goes to sprawl, go to sprawl. It's not there and we can take him over very, very easily. So, it's very crucial that we look always to control the secondary leg when we're doing our kind of asami, okay? So again, we're here. Now I'm gonna elevate him. Now I make, take a look at my left hand, guys. See what's framing? Now my right hand makes a scoop grip. Now look, there's space for this leg to go underneath, and I make a triangle. Super common mistake that I see, uh, come back here one more step. Super common mistake that I see is this. Take a look at this foot and this leg, guys. When people go here, they're thinking to themselves, okay, I know that the next step is to make a triangle with my legs. Okay, so what they do is they go like this. See that? What's the problem with this? I have no structure keeping Mark at bay from just squashing me. Yeah, you're gonna get squashed every single time, okay? So what you wanna do instead is, when I bump him up, keep this foot tight to his glute, okay? The, the triangle is gonna come from this leg coming back. It's not this leg, okay? It's this leg, okay? And, the, and the control of the secondary leg, okay? Now, another problem which you've got to be very careful about. I, I get asked about this all the time is, how do you not injure your knee when you do this? I mean, there's two rules of thumb you should have when you do this that will keep you from injuring your knee. The first is, don't allow your left leg, in this case, my left leg, uh, to flip. See how it's like, right now it's flaring aggressively over the hip? Don't do that, that's bad. <laughs> that might, like, if you said to me, Rob, your life depends on finishing this kind of assembly at all costs, like, this might help me finish that, but it also might pop my knee, so like, Realistically, you don't want to do that in most cases, right, for the purposes of longevity in the sport, right? I would rather, my goal is to usually have my knee on his torso. See how it's like connected to Mark's torso right now? It's not, right now it's not connected to his torso, it's over his torso. So we want this. So you don't want this 
This is too deep. This is too shallow. This is perfect right here. I've got a good structure. Let's see what's not. Uh, uh, come back one second. We don't want any like torquing on the knee, right? Because like if I'm here, this is bearing weight right now. That is a recipe to injure your knee. What you want is this. This can bear weight right now because look, my knee is not. This is a perfect alignment of my leg. This is a very natural alignment of my leg. This is not. You, you would never see a posture like this when someone's walking around, right? But this, this is very, this is very natural. So you want to keep your leg um, in a structure that can bear weight without injuring your knee. Now, the second trick is, so you might say, okay, Rob, I understand that, but I weigh 160 and my opponent weighs 280. Do not do this move. <laughs> this is not a move to do on a 280 pound guy. Because there are going to be times when the weight discrepancy is so large that this move just is not plausible anymore. That you're, to finish this move in that case, I really would need to flare this leg out hard, and I don't want to do that to injure my leg. So in such cases, we're going to look at other ways to entangle the leg, okay? But if a guy's cl uh, close to your weight class or, or not too far from it, right, this is an amazing move. It's, it's one of my favorites, okay? Um, anyway, so now again, we control the secondary leg. I lock up this triangle. I've got a good frame with my left arm and my left leg. Okay, my elbow and knee are connected. Now when Mark goes to bear weight on me, it's almost impossible for him to do. It's so easy for me to topple the man over and enter into a cross out sheet garami and uh, look to attack from there. Okay, guys? Does that make sense? Does anybody have any questions before we get started? Yeah, you should do it. Sure, sure, of course. Do you, you want to see it, right? Yeah, so let me do one on you. So. <laughs> He's just at the limit of how much do you weigh? Like 190. I would do this on you, yeah. I mean, uh, but then over 200, I would yeah. stop doing it. <laughs> but yeah, so let's go one more time, actually. So I elevate the man. And now look. The, the, the first two things that happen are this, OK? And now I'm going to scissor. And look, see, my left leg didn't really move much at all. It's really this leg coming back. Okay, and now I can triangle. And now when he goes to sprawl, go to sprawl. Very, very hard. If I did not have control of that leg, guys, he would have been able to sprawl and 100% uh, crush rate. Okay, so make sure you control that leg. And if possible, control at the knee. That's the best point to grip.